on that uh, picture that you took in 1994 with Madonna. Some people seem to think that maybe Tupac was involved with Madonna before you and vice versa. Like, can you give us some clarity? No, on yeah, that? yeah, he met her before me for sure. Okay. And but that relationship didn't last more than a month. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, you know, then I ran into her at, uh, at the Dallas studio. We became cool. And when when I when I saw him at, at Chaz and Wilson. I told me a girl here because I thought they were still together. Right. He said, man, I don't fuck with that bitch no more. I was like, oh, did that happen? So I told Madonna the same thing. Pac here, she said, fuck him. I said, oh. I said, all right, uh, I'm going to go spend some time with him. She, and, and I said, uh, let's go, let me walk into your car. She was like, nah, fuck that. You came with me to leave me. Fuck him. We broke out. She, she told me that once she asked me, Ride and she told the driver to take off. Right. You know? And then Pop thought I just left without coming to check. Him. Okay. And that's how that whole incident happened. And asked him about me and her. Right. She was snapped. Right. The fans said, fuck me, fuck her. She ain't nobody, I ain't nobody. I'm just hanging on. I'm hanging on for her. Right. Not knowing that she told me she wanted to tell me something in the car, then she told the driver to take off. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. I look at it like this. Everything happened that had to happen. That's destiny. Right? You know what I'm saying? You no. Know? In a in a prior conversation we had, we talked about the motion picture, the Warriors, the gang movie. Yeah. From back in the day. And I asked you, um, in, in that movie, one of the you know, like one of the alpha gangs was called the Riffs. Who would the Riffs have been in New York City in real life? They would have been the two biggest gangs when I was coming up back then were the Jolly Stompers and Tomahawks. It would have been one of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. I heard, um, well, I said, I, I won't say I heard, I read that Pappy Mason was a, a, one of the original Jolly Stompers. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, I think that was definitely the original. You know, it was him, probably uh, Kenny Duwop, who then started the Duwops, and then eventually uh, morphed into the Cats. Right. They were a pretty tough crew. In my hope. The um, would you uh, you, you tell me something about the the film, the uh, Miseducation of Sonny Carson? Oh, man, that's a long. That was a long time ago. I saw that movie. I can't remember everything about it though, man. That was a minute, bro. One of the early gang movies yeah, in New York City. Early, early, early gang. I would love to see that. I would love to get all those black movies. The Mac, Superfly, uh, Cooley uh, uh, cool, High. Yeah. Um, can't Go Let Me. You know what I'm saying? Those, yeah. those type of joints. You know? Have you ever gave any thought about producing films like that? Since you got you got acquired taste for watching, that's urban media. You think I'm saying? You ever gave any serious thought about producing urban films? We talked about it earlier. I'm now putting you on the spot. I'm definitely thinking about putting something together with the whole Brooklyn crew. I'm talking about real gangsters from the '70s out of Brownsville, East New York, Flatbush, uh, Van der Ver, Crown Heights. You know, all the areas, bed you know, Fort Green, you know, all the big projects, Tompkins, Marcy, you know? Right. And and grab all the gangsters that ever came out the months. But from the 70s and the 80s, because after that, man, the shit was a wash. There's a legendary picture online of you, Mike Tyson, Scooter, and Demencio Benson. Tell me something about that picture. Where y'all was at that night? Just hanging out somewhere? Uh, what club was we at? Oh, yeah. I think, man. The club in Manhattan that Mike used to go a lot. I think it was Bentley's, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I think it was Bentley's. We was at Bentley's that night. A nice night, man. We had a good time. Everybody kind of enjoyed themselves, man. If you want to see. Think about that party in Manhattan. It's really a shootout. Right. If it's a party in Manhattan or a club in Manhattan. 
But if it's in Brooklyn, like love people, right. it's a cemetery, baby. Let's fast forward to like early to mid nineties Brooklyn, Lafayette Gardens. We spoke uh, uh prior about world. World well me and world we ran into each other a few times, always respect. Never had no problem with him, but I gotta be honest with you. What was going in bed at that time, I had no knowledge of, you know? Because at that time I'm I'm in Queens. And um, I didn't even know the, the beef with the world and the nut and that whole thing where so many people lost their lives, you know what I'm saying? You knew both of them? Yeah. I know everybody. Oh, I God. mean, if, if, if you're out of Brooklyn and you, you're anybody, right. I know you are. I know of you, you know of me. World and um, Ivory Pina Davis, were those some of the characters that you would have ran into Sunday night at the tunnel? Definitely. I ran, as a matter of fact, I ran into World, and that's how I started finding out what's going on. I ran into World, and I was I was with Nut. God bless the dead. And um, World ran up on me, said, yo, man, Zach, what you doing with this nigga, man? This motherfucking bitch-ass nigga, man. I said, what? He said, yeah, man, bitch-ass nigga, man. Niggas, niggas got my brother killed. I said, what? I said, dog, I don't know what you talk about. Cause really, Like I said, I'm not... I'm not in the Brooklyn thing no more. I'm in Queens, you know, at my shop, and, and, and from there I hit Manhattan. Right. I don't, I don't go into Brooklyn. I fell off in Brooklyn, fell back from Brooklyn for a little right. bit. And as I was talking to him, security grabbed by, I grabbed him and slammed him against the wall. I said, yo, what y'all doing? And he said, you know, we heard on the walkie-talkie, you know, you and World getting into it. I said, oh, they nah. jacked him up. Yeah, I said, nah, that's my man, homie. We just talking, you know? Right. Then I find out later on, yeah, he, he felt like Nut had something with his brother getting killed. Right. And that shit set off a chain event. And uh, a lot of niggas lost their lives. Man. So from like, basically like top to bottom, you knew Hamo too? Yeah. Hamo's my nigga. Hamo lost his life in some kind of scenario with that dumb ass shit. You know, a lot of niggas lost their lives behind that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, it, 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 they, they, it, the, that puzzle was put together for me by someone who was telling me how all these cats end up losing their life behind what happened with the beef between World and Nut. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was a it was a crazy summer, man. That summer was a crazy summer. Brooklyn like the wild, wild west. Um, Dimencio, was that night, was that like an isolated incident, y'all just hanging out at the bar, or he was somebody that you kind of encountered in the, in the streets of Brooklyn. Now, Brooklyn is a small place. When you're in the underworld, I was told that before, so. Yeah, but, you know, Dimencio being Bed-Stuy, and I'm in Flatbush, but to be quite honest with you, Scooter, my mother lived in Bed-Stuy, so Scooter know him by, you know, going by his mom, they all hung out, knew each other from young and young days, you know what I mean? But, um, I know dude, but not, not like the way Scooter know him. You know what I'm saying? They were real tight. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So y'all kind of like posing a picture with with a mutual friend. So yeah, 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 yeah. 